Did you know that these guys, which are called leucospermins or pincushions, are indigenous to South Africa? And they form part of the Cape Fynbos Floral Kingdom, one of the botanical wonders of the world. The pincushion protea, because it's part of the protea family, has long lasting flowers. And they have heads in orange, in the most beautiful yellow and reds. And they consist of a large number of very, very small flowers with these stiff protruding styles that are fascinating and they, they almost look unnatural, but they are the most fascinating of flowers. And that is probably why right here in South Africa, um, in our homes and in homes all around the world, they make such good cut flowers. Many people think that these unusual flowers are really hard to grow in other provinces because when you're on your road trip down to Cape Town, you see them in the mountains, you see them everywhere and you think, oh, they couldn't possibly grow here. But that is so not true. They have a general preference for hot, dry summers, but cold, wet winters. But this does not stop you from growing them successfully as long as you make just a few tweaks in your back garden. They can even be grown in pots. And the hybrids or modern cultivars, as we call them, of the indigenous pincushions are actually grown all over the world for the cut flower trade. Although we know that pincushions are really drought tolerant, because we see them, we see them growing on those rugged mountain slopes where there's shale and rock and nobody's standing there with a watering can giving them a sip of water. Well guys, that's because they've had time to set their roots and they really have become established. And that is the trick. Once they've become established, you can literally sit back and watch them grow. It's very important that when you plant, that when those first six months, that you make sure that they get well watered every second or every third day. Never let them dry out. And when I talk about watering, I'm saying watering the soil, guys, and not the leaves. <laughs> and I'm gonna repeat that. Water the soil around the plant and not the leaves. If you have wet leaves, well, a whole lot of things happen. Number one, you're inviting pests and diseases. And number two, if there's a breeze blowing, you actually dry the plant out even further. So pincushions, we know they're naturally found in the Fynbos region. And with most Fynbos, as we see, and I spoke about a bit earlier, with the mountains, the ruggedness, they enjoy poor soil. And they need very little water once they're fully grown. So the thing to know is that they don't like fertilizers especially ones with the high phosphate or nitrogen content. So say no to bone meal, no to superphosphate or any phosphates in any dot, form, shape, you name it. If you use it, it will kill your plant with kindness. Okay, but that doesn't mean you use nothing. <laughs> you can, however, use an acidic compost low in phosphates. Okay, so what does that mean? How do I find that stuff? Basically, what that is, guys, is a well-composted bark. So that would be one of these bags. It's called decorative bark or bark nuggets. And you want to find one that has kind of started to break down already. And let me show you exactly what I mean. Because if I take this bag here and give it, empty it out into here. Ah, oh, there you go. You will see that this pine bark, which is very rough, beautifully organic, has already started breaking down. And that is what they love. You can also feed the young plants with an organic fertilizer that is derived from fish emulsion or seaweed, but you mix at half the normal strength. So if it says 10 mils in one liter of water, you're gonna use five mils in one liter of water. Something like Kelpac or BioOcean really helps to give them a good start in life. 
So what are the tricks when planting your pin cushions in your garden? Guys, it's very simple. What I don't want you to do is the following, is fill the hole with lots of compost, as I always tell you to do. You're not doing that. This is the only time you are not, because what it can do is create a waterlogged sump. And that, of course, is going to cause root rot and endless other problems. So what you do want to do is mix 50% of this beautiful decomposting bark with some river sand. So it's 50% of the bark nuggets that are decomposting with 50% river sand. Mix that in well and you use that to create a well-drained yet acidic or acid-leaning medium. Number three, which is your pin cushions need full sun, guys. Think about the Cape. It's a Mediterranean climate, beautiful sunshiny days. Even in a slightly light shaded area, it will cause your plants to get leggy growth with very few flowers. In South Africa, they flower from July right through until November. And in cold climate areas, I suggest that you plant your pincushions in early spring to give them the best chance to get established over the hotter summer months, which is what they need to set roots. Like with all plants, when we talk about pruning, and I've used this many, many times, we always ask, when should we prune and how should we prune? Guys, this is the rule. You've planted them in early spring. Generally, you always buy them in flower because that's what we do. And as soon as they have finished flowering, which is late spring, you will give them a pruning directly after flowering. And that rule applies to all shrubs that flower. A pincushion can become a fairly large shrub. Okay, so think about where you're going to be planting it. Some of them can get 1.5 high and 2 meters wide. I mean, really big, depending, of course, on the species. But if in doubt, <laughs> always read the label, because on the label will tell you the height, the width, and everything that I have just given you in terms of the care instructions right here. So don't let your shrub get too tall as they will topple over. And of course, if you are going to keep cutting off the flowers for the vase because they last so long, you're going to be doing some pruning naturally, which is really cool. And any spent flowers that you haven't cut off for the vase, please do prune those off as well. Always remember, like with any pruning, that you must remove weak or unproductive stems from the middle of the plant to allow enough airflow and more light, which will also help prevent pests and diseases. And of course, with more light, you're going to get more leaf growth, which in turn is going to give you more flowers. And if there are any branches laying on the soil, please do remove those as well, because they become a little like trampoline for hawkers and insects to climb onto your plant, plus harvester termites, we just love to chomp on those. And lastly, never ever cut into old wood. And when we mean by old wood, that is where there are very few leaves, it's really thickened, and it's got a, a really dark bark around it, or they look a bit sick or even bleak. A few little tweaks and you can have these beautiful indigenous beauties growing in your garden, in flower beds, or whether in pots. Everything I have used today is available at Builders, either in store or online at builders.co.za. And for more inspirational gardening content and how-to videos, visit the blog on the website. Get to Builders and get it done.